Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Kashif Booth podcast. If you're new here, each week I sit down with a guest and we discuss their career so far, the highs, the lows and what's next for them. Today's guest is RJ Dawson. We met at the ABFF 2019. If you don't know what ABFF is, that's the American Black Film Festival in South Beach, Miami. RJ, your film was selected, your film Gummy Bear, which was selected to be screened at the festival. Yeah, so that's how we met. So welcome to the show, RJ. Appreciate you for having me. Um, also, a pretty cool platform you set up here, by the way, if nobody's told you yet, but like, this is pretty dope. So again, thank you for even considering me. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to have you on here. I mean, when I thought to do my second season, because in the second season, it's all about Black men who are film writers, TV directors. I really wanted them to come on here. And I thought of you, because like, it's with this second season, I've literally started off with all of my US contacts, either New York or Miami, to really like get you guys first, because I really want to hear what you guys are doing before I start to speak to my UK guys as well. So, so what was your inspiration behind Gummy Bear? Honestly, the the simplest simplest way I say it is like just being black in America. I, I don't know if that sounds cliche or not, um, but you know, like you always anybody you deal with like emotions, and a lot of times they're vaguely abstract. You like you don't know why you're feeling this way or why you feel rubbed wrong in certain situations and things like that. Um, and I think one night, like just gummy bear. Literally, I wrote gummy bear in an hour. Um, cause I was, it was my, you know, AFI thesis film, AFI American Film Institute. Um, it was thesis time. I had pitched like other projects. Gummy Bear wasn't even one of them. Um, and I had been struggling, just struggling to write those other ones, not because I didn't know what was going to happen, but because like, I guess I just wasn't feeling it. And this other thing was on my heart. So I was like, yo, I'm going to just like get this out of the way so I can go ahead and write my thesis. So like I bust out Gummy Bear sent it to my brother, who's also a filmmaker, uh, cinematographer, director, um, Darius Dawson is his name, if that matters. <laughs> uh, and I sent it to him and he was like, yo, cause I was like, yo, let's do this as a co-direction. Cause it's like, we've been, people keep saying like, oh, your brothers, you should make films together, which is like annoying to hear, but you're always gonna hear it in the film industry because film is obsessed with like brother, sister, family combos, which is fine. Um, but he was like, I was like, yeah, I want to direct this with you. And he's like, no, nah, you need to do this for your thesis. Um, and essentially, kind of like he said, there was a lot to unpack in it because maybe it's a personal philosophy thing, but I do feel like everything is interconnected. And also, you know, everything has like some sort of intersectional point. Everything has a layer on top of it. Uh, palimpsest is the term, it's an art term. Image, uh, pieces of the picture behind the image that's left behind. Like there's always something like still there that no matter where you try to attack it from, it's going to be connected. So for me, I did want to kind of make the film that seemed like it was about everything, but how everything is just one thing and how it just, it is just a roll of emotions. So um, yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm babbling now, but that, <laughs> that's kind of where, that's kind of where Gummy Bear came from. It was like, you know, like this is, this is just what it feels. And I wanted to do something that overcame the 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 construct of being black you know what i mean like i i i always struggle with my identity as a black and feel free to catch me if i go rambling i do ramble um i struggle with my identity as a black filmmaker sometimes and i feel like i'm more in control of it now but it's like oh i don't want the blackness to perceive the filmmaker or do you want the film you know vice versa and um for me I feel like storytelling is storytelling. It's universal. Like no matter who we are or where we are, we feel. That's the universal language. So to me, if you can, if you can do that in a film, if you can just use the pure emotions in the film, the context will inform you about my blackness or my whatever, my whatever walk of life you come from. But the reality of it is like how you connect to people is just pure straight up emotion. And I think those are the two places I was coming from, just raw emotion and um the 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 confusing nature of just being a black kid in America. So, and um, so like after that, because your film screened and you were to like to get into such a prestigious film festival, what what happened after that? One of the things, one of the things to me about the whole like uh, film festival circuit, uh, or uh, honestly, like anything, and you know, like if you get into any film festival or whenever you have something. It's about the next step, you know what I mean? Like it's not about it's not about like what you have there, like whatever you've accomplished. Like what are you accomplishing off of that? 
And if I'm to be honest, I do not think that I um, exploited my screening at ABFF uh, optimally. And I don't say that to say that like I wasted ABFF. Like I think that was great. Uh, got a lot of contests, got a f- information, et cetera, so forth, blah, 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 blah. Um, but in terms of that turning into like, oh, okay, now we're going to do Gun Bear, the feature, right? Like it didn't instantly roll into that. That's still something that's in the work per se. Um, but it, it didn't spark off like that because again, it's kind of about, it's very much about being prepared out here. Um, and I'd say honestly, anywhere in this industry possibly, well, i won't say in other industries i maybe music because i feel like music is vaguely similar to film industry i could be wrong because i have no idea um but i feel like it's a a lot of luck a lot maybe close to pure luck and i do want to define that because people instantly get upset when you say it's like oh i worked hard i did blah 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 whatever whatever it's like yeah you did but the reality of it is you like something happened at the right time luck is what um preparedness meets opportunity right you can get an opportunity and not be prepared you can be prepared and not get the opportunity you can have both and just be in the wrong place at the wrong time you know what i mean and i think trying to be a step ahead is what's the important part for example it's not to say that it's like oh i fully fumbled that it's like no i've i've had meetings you know what i mean like I, i've gone and pitched shows to like pretty like pretty big companies that I was like, yo, why are you letting me in the doors? You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, like the, again, it's about uh, exploiting the opportunities correctly, but also having the right people around you. Um, and that's what I've learned the most in these, in, in this entire time. Uh, but you have to have, you have to have, you know, find your tribe. They always say, but like, that's real because you need an army. This is this is not this is not something simple or easy to do, um, particularly when it becomes industry related. Because like there's so much money that needs to go into it, and then there's so much red tape, and then there's also so much money, and then there's also like, oh, who am I arguing with? And did I mention the, the money? Because like <laughs> these people want like they it suddenly costs like so much to do films, and if you could do it cheap somewhere else, but like. What are you trying to accomplish as a film? What do you want out of your career? You know, these are all those questions that kind of like start piling on top of that. So to try and get back to answer the question that you're talking about, um, we I I did use I, I did use that to get into contact with people. Uh, we were able, you know, I was talking to a certain company. I don't know if I'm allowed to name them or not because I don't. I, I, I hate to say it out loud, but I didn't read the, any contracts or anything. They're like, oh, yeah, sign this. And I, I trust them enough. So I'm like, okay, sign. But it's like, you know, there could have been an NDA. <laughs> I don't know. Um, read your don't contract. Don't be like, okay, read your contract. Don't be like me. I was just about to say, like, I am I am a vaguely bad example. Um, unless it works, then it's like, okay, that's fine. But like, it's got to work before you follow that example. Um, but yeah, you know, like, I, one of the things about ABFF is that the people who I was talking to, pitching to, they were also at ABFF. So I was like, oh, hey, I'm here. My film screening, you want to meet up? That helped get some traction. You know, we're talking to certain people, agents, representatives, you know, like get the, open those conversations. I will say that that COVID really knocked the strain off the trails. You know what I mean? And it's like, I feel like everybody feels that. It's like, yeah, like it did. Like it did. It interrupted the entire world's plans and progress. Um, so a lot of like the momentum that we gathered kind of shattered by that because it is fragile when you're, I, when you're a no name and I don't mean to say it so sounding derogatory, but it's like legitimately, if you don't have one of the things, sorry, I jump around a lot. If you can't tell uh, one of the things that, um, that my producers told me about one of these pieces that I was pitching, everybody loves it. And that's, that's another thing that gets into your head. You got to be kind of mentally fortified to do it out here. Cause like everybody will love it. And everybody's like, Oh, this is great. Blah, 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 blah. And nobody's paying for it. Nobody wants to like sign it. Nobody wants to do whatever, whatever. And my boys come back to me and it's like, yeah, like everybody's legit. It's legitimately love it. You just don't have a name attached. They can't, they're not going to, they're not going to gamble 3 million an episode on RJ Dawson, who did a short film that went to ABFF. You know what I mean? On this, but like you bring in, you bring in uh, Damon Idris. Uh, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, you bring in Daniel Kaluuya. I, I always mispronounce his name. Like he wanted to say say Kaluuya, which is like one of my favorite alcoholic drinks. Oh yeah, Kaluuya. 
Kaluya, Kaluya. All right, thank you. Um, you know what I mean? But it's like that, that's the that's what becomes part of the deal. Um, it becomes a name game. It's the money tag game. So it's like the struggle in terms of the industry when you're when you're not connected, when you don't have friends, when you're not showing up with like a million in your pocket already. It's literally it's a waiting game. I've had so many, so many conversations, so many phone calls, so many Zoom calls, so many pitch meetings, blah, 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 blah. And in one sense, in, in, in a sense, that's success. You know what I mean? Like I am, I, you know, I, it takes, sometimes I have to take a step back and realize like I'm doing the career I set out to do. I'm getting in rooms. I'm pitching stories. I'm, I'm doing it. Nobody's cutting me a big enough check yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like for me to feel it's like okay, am I eating off? Am I eating eating off of this? Am I putting down payments on a house or like am I getting a car? Because I need a new car. If anybody wants to gift art, no, nah, let me not. <laughs> but it's like yeah, you know what I mean? Like we like uh, even as even as artists, you know, like some of us are business people. I and I wish I had that businessman tenacity, but like some of us are artists, some of us are writers, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, there's another level there's there's like there's another level to this that it takes to get stuff done and i guess that's why you need your team you know what i'm saying like i'm i always say that i'm not a hunter per se like i i can go i can work a room i'm good at what i do i'm not a hunter i need to be put in the right place i got boys around me that put me in the right place they just put me somewhere and say go and i go that's what you that's what you need. Again, I had probably cotton completely off whatever the question was, but like in, in terms of like what it takes. Oh, I get we were talking about like what am I doing out here? Yeah, so like right now I'm trying to get my musical done. Um I'm also still trying to get a TV show on and a feature made. Momentum's picking back up because the world's opening again. So that's what I'm working on. I'm, oh, yeah. Also, I'm doing a podcast. So <laughs> um, that somebody had to, it's shameless plug, right? Um, and I had to be convinced to do it because it's like, I'm not, I, it's not something that's, that I'm, I, I have a penchant towards per se, but like, um, it is, I, it's kind of about the time being like, it's called Sticky Notes on the Revolution. I guess I should say that. Sticky Notes on the Revolution. Go check it out, guys, on all streaming platforms. Um, and it's, it's kind of, it's a free form podcast with free form jazz that just kind of like walks through the experience and talks about like lessons that were learned out there. Um, but that kind of, that kind of segues to like, if you are creative, you just have to keep creating. Like you can't in like, vaguely career advice, you can't let any industry be your validation because otherwise you're going to feel worthless. You'll always feel worthless. You don't mean anything to this industry. You're the most important part of this industry, but you don't mean anything to them because you're another, you're a check, you're a number. And like, you're like, they can put you on, make money off of you. And if it no longer serves them, it's like, you can be out. So like, you have to be able to validate yourself first. And that's just like fulfilling yourself creatively. Are you making what you want to make? Are you telling the stories you want to make? Are you being honest to yourself? That's the important part, so. Hopefully that answers some sort of question. <laughs> when you were talking about, you know, uh, where you are pitching and you are in the meetings, meeting rooms with the right people. Last year, um, I exec produced uh, a pilot called Talia Versus and I exec produced it. And interest from like production companies and like wanting to uh, take it to another level and stuff like that. And we had like a well-known person like really interested in it. He wanted to pitch it to like really big networks over here in the UK but then he kind of lowballed us because it wasn't even a good deal mm. and he then wanted to change it to fit his brand do you have taken into consideration everything what you want to do so we just kind of took it back so yeah so it's congrats kind of on that like it like make getting anything done is an accomplishment like you can judge it for its own merits later but like getting anything done is like that's that's a task so yeah I'm doing a project now and it was supposed to be a web series that was going to be a pilot don't know where it's going to go but I'm going to push it to where it needs to be I, you made me think uh I, I remember at in Miami actually during the ABFF festival somebody had seen gummy bear and offered me a feature like on the spot um and I was you know like I was excited I was like oh snap it's about to go down uh but but you know, like he would, like you said, it was a low ball deal. It's like, oh, like we all have money, money. So it's like, okay, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to like, I, I'll take a cut. You know, again, artists. So it's like, I'm willing to take a cut. It's a feature. You know what I'm saying? 
and it's like the the story he wanted to tell was like, like I'm 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 not gonna like, but it was like the story he wanted to tell. I was like, okay, I it's not for me. I'd want to make you know like I'd want to make these changes and blah blah blah. And he was open to it, but he still was like just really stuck on his thing. And it's like I had to choose my identity again. Like this is your particularly it's, uh, another vague tangent, but like one of one of the one of the difficulties of filmmaking is that you're going to be known by your first big thing so it's like they're going to want that over and over from you and it's like your responsibility to either do it or or like break their expectations like i i'm i'm planning to break expectations like there's a bunch of different things that i want to do and i don't want to be boxed in um that being said you're going to be like and you're going to be judged by that so it's like what you decide to put out as your first foot you should be very considered about again artistic integrity decide if you decide do you want money more or do you want your message more like one of the things i'm really thankful about afi um the american film institute uh just like i always say afi because i never know what there's even people in la that don't know what afi is i'm like oh okay cool we're not a big deal Uh, but, but um the thing about afi this conservatory setting you get to make films in private Cause if you, if you mess something up, it's like, okay, I can sweep. I literally get to sweep that in the rug and try again. You don't get that privilege in the industry, particularly as a black person, white boys can go again, not to make it necessarily right about race, but let's be real. White boys can go make terrible film after terrible film and still get an opportunity. One black person makes one bad movie. And all of a sudden the entire black race is on question for whether or not they're capable of making films. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's one of the difficult, like, Diff, uh, burdens of being a black fellow, if you can call it that. You know what I mean? It's like this idea is like, oh, everything I got to do is just be great. And it shouldn't have to be that way. Like, that's something that's got to change. It's like, we deserve to make crappy films too. Not saying go cra- make crappy films, but it's like, it shouldn't be like a death sentence for your career. So. I want to take us like all the way back to the beginning. How did you get yeah. started in film? That's an interesting question. Um, you know, so technically, I, I, I'd say I follow my brother in the film. I don't think I've ever, I never said that to him. I don't know if I'd ever say that to him, but, <laughs> but um, we had, it's, it's a kind of long story. If you can't tell, I tell long stories. Um, me, and my, me and my brother kind of grew up creative. Like we used to draw our own comic books. We made our own card games. We used to make board games. Like we were always like putting stuff together. So it's like, you know, um, st- you're doing comic books, you're storyboarding like essentially and like i did my first graphic novel when i was like 11 or 12 uh i might still have it somewhere honestly like i was digging digging through old stuff a while ago i was like oh this is something i did um so it's like we've always i i've always been i say we because i include my brother but like i've always been a storyteller and i went to my undergraduate was in aerospace engineering uh, Cause I thought I wanted to, I, at first I wanted to be a fighter pilot. They told me I was too tall for the cockpit. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll design fighter planes. Uh, went through aerospace engineering, hated it. I guess it's a short answer. It, it just, it didn't, it was more number crunching than like seeing airplanes come to life. You know what I mean? Uh, and I kind of wandered a little bit in college. My brother was taking like cinematography classes. I ended up in a film class and like, from there, it's just been it's been film ever since. Um, yeah, I got two master's degrees in film. Huge waste of money. <laughs> like, it's not, I I don't I don't regret going to the schools, right? But like, it should not have cost that much. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's like I just I I it stuck with me. Um, and I guess for directing specific, because I also thought I was going to be a set designer, because I you know I drew. So it's like yeah, I'm all, I'm designing sets. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but I wanted more control over the story. I don't know if that's conceited or what to say, <laughs> but it's like I I did. I was like yeah, I have stories to tell. So it's like I need to I need to direct them. I also could have written them, but again, you still lose a certain power of in writing because like you can craft an entire story the director's still going to be like all right bet but i feel this though so like we're going to do that you know what I'm saying? so i do write and i have i i my manager sells me as a writer right now because it's like i i'm a really good writer if i can say that humbly um but i never wanted to be a writer i want to be a director and i write to direct so but i do write for other people like i'm i'm 100 down for that because i understand i have a gift i can use it 
let's do it right um so yeah that's kind of how i got into film i been still telling stories all, all my life so this seemed like it should fit right so you know trying to make a living off of it that's the that's that's the hard part the skill itself comes comes easy so well that's good to hear it's good to hear i love hearing everyone's journey into film like it's not just like oh how did you start you know getting your first job it's like what brought you into this why did you want to tell stories it, it was definitely like as an add-on i guess star wars did it i my father my father left my family sad story right uh, my father left the family i was like younger but like one of the things that kind of stuck was like we always used to watch star wars um and that's why i thought i wanted to be a fighter pilot but what it really was about is like that world you know like the stories that he was telling so uh it made me want to be a storyteller star wars made me want to be a storyteller so so what's next like what can you share i know you've touched on it briefly but like what have you got going on or like yeah one of my biggest goals right now is getting my musical done. I've been mu- working on my musical for like te- technically eight years because it wasn't a musical. Yeah, it wasn't a musical at first. Like it was a story. It was just a story about this guy trying to sort out like love or whatever the case may be. And it's taken a bunch of different iterations. And I kind of got into like a real deep jazz exploration when I moved to L.A. for film school. Um, and just like the way that music is able to tell stories abstractly again i always talk about like this universal language like trying to transcend our cultural boundaries in order to reach you know just human spirit right and that's what music is it's timeless it's languageless is that a real word <laughs> um but i get it, it, it yeah. close enough right yeah um it mu- like music has this quality and particularly like jazz music and how it kind of pervades into so many other forms of music it's like just it's something that like you feel in your soul. So I was like, okay, bet. I want to tell a story, not only with like moving image and human emotion, but like also sound. Um, so my, like, that's, that's kind of like my big baby project right there. Um, my musical and it's going well, again, like you, this industry is a lot of waiting for other people, particularly when you need their money. So like we're in a waiting phase. Um, my TV project I put together a pro. I put together a project about the Black Samurai. I don't know how much I should be saying again, but like, oh well, let's do it. Um, <laughs> I have a I have a, a thing that I put together about the Black Samurai because like when I was a kid, I used to um, I did a lot of Japanese like samurai stuff. Like that's kind of what helped raise me. <laughs> and um, like as I became a storyteller, it just kept morphing with that. So that's another big project that I want. Like those are my two big ones. So my musical in my samurai piece um that are in the works we'll see how worked out they get so <laughs> i mean as we know it takes so long for things to get developed so i, yeah. I wish you the best of luck i appreciate it i need it i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> okay so like where can people find you like to check out your work or socials and stuff? Mm. um i <laughs> So again, I do have the podcast, uh, Sticky Notes on the Revolution. You can find it on all streaming platforms that I know of. I, I, I make sure that it's up by checking Spotify. So I know it's at least on Spotify. Um, I do have an Instagram, which is Dawson RJ, at Dawson RJ. Um, I've recently just like dumped a lot of stuff off of there, to be honest. Like it's probably like the worst time to come on a podcast and be like, oh yeah, I kind of abandoned social media. So, uh, but like my profile is still there. I do, um, I've been kind of low key with social media lately. Again, not the best thing to be saying on a podcast, but like, um, I've just kind of been focusing inward. Um, I've been doing music, you know what I mean? Like trying to explore interests, trying to like get my focus back and focus on self type of things. Um, that being said, you can still find me. You can always reach out to me. I'll answer eventually. Uh, <laughs> but I am... Those are the those are the places I still my podcast is coming out weekly, it seems. Um, and I am on social media at Dawson RJ. I don't have my work up anywhere, but honestly, if you I don't I'll, if you oh wait, nope. You know what? I do be forgetting about my stuff. Uh my gummy bear is actually streaming on AMC, AMC has a subsidiary network and I can't, I think it's called All Black or something like that. I'm, I'm apparently, I'm streaming on there and I say apparently because I, I haven't personally seen it, but they sent me an email telling me it was happening. So it's like, okay, I'm streaming on AMC. So you can see Going Bear on All Black. 
uh, if you'd like. And honestly, if you ask me, I'd send you a link. I'm not precious with it. I, it's actually something I made because I want people to see it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that's that's part of my issue as an artist. Like, like I like I don't care about money. I just want people to see the thing. But also, I gotta eat. So I gotta, <laughs> you gotta gotta find a middle ground. But my gummy bear streaming on all black. If you reach out to me and you want to see it, I'm happy to send a link to be real. So. Nice. Well, I mean, it's been great having you on here. I feel like we've had a really good discussion as well. And uh, you can follow me all on social media, Kashif Booth, Kashif Booth Entertainment, or the Kashif Booth Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes coming soon.